Hello and welcome to another episode of Tech I Want. My name is Rafi. And I'm still Daniel. And today we are going to be looking at a product that's basically, well, if you ever thought that regular photography was just far too easy and you wanted to complicate things, this is the product for you. Yeah, uh, it definitely is because like film photography as well, no? There's a very kind of mm, school of do it yourself and try to be weird, try to be artsy, but get something unique that nobody has ever seen before. Yeah, you know? and I feel like you can do that with no <laughs> effort whatsoever if you use this product. Today, we're looking at the Pinhole Pro Max, a camera lens that puts the power of pinhole photography into the hands of the modern digital photographer. Now, what is pinhole photography? Did you guys ever do that experiment in school uh, where you take a cardboard box, you poke a hole through it, yeah. you put some wax paper on the other side, uh -huh. and then you shine a really bright light with like some object in silhouette or something, and you get the inverse of this object on the other side, on the wax paper. Yes. Yes. <laughs> No, that all sounds very familiar, actually. I do remember, I, I think I remember creating a, a, a shoebox diorama that I had to, to also take a photograph of. Is that, is that kind of what it is? Or is that something totally different? And now I'm just, I'm just mixing up two different school assignments that I did 30 years ago. It might be. I think it was uh, trying to teach us vision and how the eye works, because the eye is kind of like a pinhole as well, in that it flips the image that you're seeing the okay. other way around. And so that's how it works. It's a very, very simple lens. There's no glasses, lenses that work together. It's just a hole, very tiny, 0.15 millimeter hole that focuses all of the light, and you do need a lot of light, mm -hmm. onto the center behind it. When you say focus the light, does it bring in more light than a normal lens would do or it just it just has the little hole that tries to get as much i mean there's as much light as that can pass through this little hole is getting in there right yeah so which is where i found a little bit of difficulty with this thing yeah because you do need a lot of light a lot of light yeah normal cameras say with a aperture of like f2 the aperture is very open you've got this hole in the lens right now we're looking at one right there it's pretty open and so that means that a lot of light is coming in through that lens. Yeah. This one is the opposite direction. Normally lenses go up until f22, I think f36, producer f36 lenses, f32. Okay, we got an f32. This, the widest it can go is f36. The uh -huh. narrowest is something like f250, which yeah. is crazy, crazy small, which means two things. One, everything is in focus. Okay. And two, everything's really dark. Unless, and this is where the interesting thing of pinhole photography comes in, you do really long exposure photography. So I was playing around with this yesterday and I was leaving the, what is it? Shutter speed was on 30 seconds. 30 seconds, bulb, two minutes, five minutes. I was doing like really, really long exposure photography, uh -huh. which normally people only do at night. Have you ever seen those pictures with the traffic with the brake lights? Yeah, Night. yeah, or, or or maybe yes, I have, I have, yeah, totally cool. And then I've also seen the the ones with the stars, and maybe as the the Earth rotates, they and move. you kind of see the star, the the streaming Streak. that goes on behind it. Yeah, so those that's long exposure photography. You know where I remember that from the the movie uh, that Leonardo DiCaprio was in, and he gets stranded on an island and takes a bunch of psychedelics, and then it lives life as a video game. The beach. You remember the beach? He has this one scene where he's where he's like yeah. falling in love with the girl and like they, they go out and they take photographs together using their long exposure long exposure yeah <laughs> and their streaks behind the, the stars she wanted to see his long exposure <laughs> yeah <laughs> which by the way I, I i highly recommend that film i know this is a, a review about cameras and you can see how that how this uh, kind of like technology is being used i don't know if it's a pinhole camera but I, at least the, the streaking that goes on <laughs> done, done by leo and by the stars so it is kind of the same concept because at right. night you need to leave the lens open for a long time so that it actually uh, absorbs all this light and that's the long exposure but you can't do that during the day because if you leave if you do a long exposure shot during the day it's too much light it overexposes and yeah. you get this white image so the cool thing about this is all of a sudden you can take these traffic shots 
uh -huh. of cars moving, people moving during the day. During the day, Be because, because you're limiting the amount of light that's coming in, right? Yes. So there are pinhole lenses out there. This isn't the first, and this isn't pinhole thingify pinholes first lens either. They'd come up with their first pinhole, which was just a regular one. This is the first lens, as far as I know, that has different focal lengths and different apertures for pinhole photography. It's combined all the previous ones into one maximum ultimate lens, right? Yeah. And so you get it 0.15 millimeters to 0.5 millimeter size of the pinhole, which translates roughly to F36 to F250 or something like that. And something else that I found pretty interesting with this is, uh, have you ever seen like cityscapes? where there's just nobody there. You know, it's Rome, it's the Colosseum, there's no cars, there's no people. It's the Eiffel Tower. There's nobody there in the scene. Sure. But then when you go there to travel, there's way too many people. You can't get that shot. Uh -huh. With this, you can. Because you leave it open for two minutes and all of a sudden everyone blurs in the image uh -huh. and you just have the static thing that doesn't move, the Eiffel Tower. Interesting. So wait, is everyone else a blur then? Is your is your picture full of blurries at the bottom? It's a little bit hazy. Okay, okay. But you, you can't even tell. But you can tell with the whole image itself because everything is kind of blurry. Mm -hmm. There is this like art artsy fartsy style to shooting with pinhole. That, that's what I found, you know, like, and I, I think it's because I wasn't using a tripod at first, but when I was taking pictures, I found that it was really hard for me to get enough light through that the pinhole lens in order to take a decent photograph. So oftentimes what I had to revert to was like taking a picture and then checking. Because Oh gosh, that's another thing, but I'll get to that in a second. The, the, the other thing was that the way I solved this was by basically taking pictures of the sun, which I'm, not, I'm sure I'm not supposed to be staring directly at the sun, uh, but I was through the viewfinder and taking pictures of that with, with some objects in the foreground uh, like I, for instance, I took a picture of a crane. Um, do we have that? Shoot. Was there any point in me mentioning that <laughs> if I can't even show you the picture? I don't know. But anyway, I took a picture of a construction crane with the sun behind it. And that was the best image that I got. But even that was just a little bit blurry because I was doing it through my hands. Did you get a uh, ring flare? I, no? No, I don't think so. But I got, I got a lot of this kind of ethereal kind of feeling to it because there was a slight out of focus and just a, a little soft blur attached to it all, like a Gaussian blur, you mm -hmm. know? Because like some of the shots I took into the sun or like with someone silhouetted against the sun, which hopefully we, you can see now, Yeah. Uh, you have this really weird lens flare that's just this circle of light around the person mm. that I was taking a picture of. Yeah, yeah. Like a holy person, huh? Something else I tried to do was take a picture, hold it there for like 10, 15 seconds, and then move the camera to somewhere else. Mm. So all of a sudden I had a building with trees kind of overlaid onto it. Yeah. Um, which is kind of like double exposure. So there's this idea where you take one picture, take another picture, and then just overlap them, overlay them, and kind of fade them together. You could do the same with yourself. So I took a couple of pictures where I sit on the bench for 10 seconds, and then I move to somewhere else for 10 seconds. Uh -huh. And now all of a sudden, I'm in there's the same shot you. twice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. magic. Cool. Did it turn out all right? Well, artsy fartsy. <laughs> <laughs> so, so did you like taking, I mean, was it pretty easy to, I understand like if it was like me, I had a difficult time getting the image that I wanted. But in the end, I got an image that was really abstract and kind of cool because it was so unexpected, you know? So this lens works with most modern cameras. There's a different one for the Canon or for the Sony or, or for Nikon, whatever it is you want, there's a different mount. Uh, I thought this was really cool. It's a very high quality product. It's aluminum, correct? Yeah. And uh, it's interesting that there's also no glass in this. It is just one piece, right? And with, this is also where I found that there was a little bit of, uh, of a problem is that because there's no lens through there, uh, you might often have to clean because it goes directly into the camera, right? Like so that any kind of dust or anything like that might get inside. It's that, just, it's just a no hole. There's no glass? Yeah, it's just a hole, I, I, I'm pretty sure. It's beautiful in its simplicity. So normally when you're changing the aperture on a regular lens, you can see the blades, how they kind of close together and make the hole smaller. Whereas with this one, you're actually changing the hole itself. There are six, it's a plate with six different holes of different sizes. And as you spin this, 
I don't know if you can see that. Maybe we can show it in B-roll. You can just see the aperture size change. Yeah, right. That's Almost how I was doing it. Almost imperceptibly. Yeah. And again, another artsy thing. You can actually have two at once. Check that out like that. Uh-huh. And you get a really weird image when you do that. <laughs> Definitely fun to play around with. One where the center would be just pitch black? Pretty much. Yeah, yeah you get like this kind of alien eye shape. Yeah, yeah with blackness in the middle. Interesting. And I think that's what pinhole photography is. It's kind of almost like, again, going back to the idea of film, you know? If you're into the weirder stuff in photography, mm -hmm. you're not going to get what you expect, but you are gonna get some insanely beautiful, weird stuff. Yeah. And that's kind of how I had fun with it yesterday. I'm not a photographer by any means. I couldn't capture that perfect shot, but I had a lot of fun running around experimenting with it. So in the end, I thought this was a very cool toy for, or, or just like something of an accessory for someone that has already have some experience with photography that wants to take it to another level, especially if they want to do some experimental photography. You can film video with it as well. It gives this nice little retro looking filter. Obviously, I mean, these are maybe something, a filter that you could apply in Instagram or uh, Lightroom. So I'd buy it more for the photo features, which is something that you really can't uh, copy in software in post-production. Yeah. But for video as well, you know, super simple lens to get this weird 80s vibe. If you want to learn more about the pinhole, you can check out their page on Kickstarter. The link is in the description. And at the time of recording this video, you can get yours for $259. So that was a Thingify Pinhole Pro Max, a very cool lens, especially if you want to take your photography to the next level. Um, we hope you enjoyed that and stay tuned for more reviews similar to this about all kinds of different tech and innovations. Until next time, I'm Rafi. And I'm Dan. We're out.